Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love these watches, everything you see here is for sale. Reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of the watches you see here. And we love to buy, trade, and sell. We sell what we buy. We buy what we sell. Reach out to us if you'd like to sell a watch or an entire collection. We pay cash. We pay fast. We make the process seamless. And no upper limit on value paid. We will buy your entire collection. We also love trades and can often offer a better value on a trade of a watch than we can on an outright sale. But to buy, trade, or sell, reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. The Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter is not the ultimate Omega Diver. We have quite a few that sit above it in terms of seniority and expense, but in terms of notoriety, no Omega Seamaster dive watch is more famous. Having risen to fame in the 1990s as the James Bond watch on the wrist of Pierce Brosnan during his turn as 007, the Diver 300 meter has proven to be remarkably enduring and versatile, as during the latest variant, Debuted in 2018, we've had a range of sizes and styles. Starting in 2019, we got a ceramic case. 43.5 millimeters in black ceramic, that was a good start, but Omega thought it could take the theme even further. So for 2021, we got this, the Diver 300 meter, black, black. It is all black, everything's black, none more black. And it's surprisingly easy to read for a watch that is so monotone, as there's a good contrast between the polish and set nation of the dial. We'll do a quick loom shot just to remove all doubt. I know you're wondering. Yes, it is luminescent. And yes, just like the standard watch, there's differential loom for the minute hand and the bezel pearl, so you can easily line them up relative to each other. So while it may be super subtle by day, it is high contrast by night or in the depths when diving. The bezel, Super precise, 120 click action, and the watch is ceramic inside and out. So that's case, bezel, bezel insert, and even dial. As you can see below the hand, zirconium oxide, the chemical formula of ceramic, it's what the watch is made of. 300 meters water resistant on the reverse side, 55 hour power reserve, master chronometer certified, shock resistant, and anti magnetic. Omega caliber 8806. The 8806 is the no date version of the 8800, and you can see that. The ceramic 43 and a half Seamaster Diver 300 meter has a no date dial. Now we have a matching ceramic pin buckle, which is impressive because a lot of brands will give you titanium or steel right here and just black coat it because they can't actually make a reliable ceramic part this fine and this small. Well, Omega, as part of Swatch Group, has that kind of capability. So both buckle and pin are made of scratch-resistant black ceramic. Helium escape valve, open it up before or during a dive. On this generation, you can open it up during a dive. And if helium that is intruded within the watch during saturation diving wants to escape, it can do so. And in fact, the valve opens internally when internal pressure exceeds external by two to three bar, and that'll avoid expelling the crystal and seals of the watch. Rubber strap, fully integrated, matte black. The watch wears well, large but light, being mostly ceramic and sapphire. It is kind of feathery on the wrist for a timepiece this big. I've got the original 41.5 millimeter steel full bracelet diaper 300 meter, and that weighs more than this does. This is wonderfully wieldy, light, and comfortable. Speaking of black, black watches, Back in the 1970s, we had the Tag Heuer Monaco Dark Lord. Well, the Dark Lord is back. Launched for 2022, this is a Monaco with the Heuer Caliber 02 inside, a 39 millimeter Monaco. You could see DLC coated, a much more durable black coating than the 1970s original. And you'll appreciate that this watch featuring a manufacturer column wheel vertical clutch automatic chronograph, 80 hour power reserve. You can see the column wheel is active and 100 meters water resistant. So it is an aquatic timepiece. We have a full clasp. This one is, as you can see, made of blackened titanium. But then again, so is the watch. And we have rose gold on the dial, a combination of tarmac style granular finishing outboard, and then a, I would say a combination of polish and matting at center, which you could see has been distributed across the center disc as well as the sub registers. Chronograph hands for seconds, minutes, and hours are in lovely lacquered red. 
And the watch was large for its size, but I would say compare it to something like a 42 millimeter round watch and you've got the right idea. It's technically a 39, but a 39 in this particular shape, even with stubby lugs across the wrist, it's gonna wear a little bit bigger. So think of it as a 42 millimeter round watch and you've got exactly the right mental sense of how this watch is gonna fit. We have another watch in a similar vein, but considerably thinner. Launched in 2021 to great acclaim, this is the Hermes H08, the H08. It is a timepiece that is composed of DLC blackened, polished, and satinated titanium. Now, it is approximately 46.5 millimeters from lug to lug, and that's probably the operative measurement. About 40 millimeters wide, you wanna think 46.5 lug to lug, that's really what's gonna determine how this fits on the wrist. Now, it's not necessarily a man's or a woman's watch, but it will fit well on a smaller wrist, and mine being 16 centimeters circumference, you get a good sense of that. We have a strap in orange rubber that has an embossed textile style printing pattern on it, but make no mistake, it's all rubber. We get a very smart clasp design here. You can see it's a double fold with twin trigger release, so it pops open when you press the triggers. But then internally, try to zoom in a little bit, we have a quick adjustment. So you have this push button release that you can use to make fine adjustments to the fit when it's on the wrist. And you can see the use of ceramic spring-loaded pin snaps to ensure that over time, the snap remains snappy. You can also see that the layering of the buckle matches the layering and colors of the case. So you can see that overlap of color and tone, and then it's echoed in the case design. Special typeface is created for Hermes watches, and you can see that the font used on the date disc is the same as the font used on the dial itself, which is mostly a granular finish. There is plenty of luminescence, no shortage in that regard. This is a sports watch, and all three hands are loomed. Turn it all over, and you'll be happy to know that this watch is 100 meters water resistant, so yes, you can swim with it. We have a Vauche 3002 movement, here doing business as the Hermes caliber 1837, but that's fitting because one of the largest investors in Vauche manufacture, the movement arm of Parmigiani, is in fact Hermes. So that's paying off in the use of movements like this in their watches. Automatic winding, two barrels, 50 hour power reserve, quick set, stop seconds, free sprung balance, and then five position adjustment like a chronometer. High horology and chronometer standard is five position adjustment. The beveling is actually quite nice. You can see it lights up when you hold it against the light. Started mechanically, but probably finished with a handheld buffing tool. It comes across quite a bit more attractive than the sharp filing you'll find on a JLC or a Zenith, for example. You can see the Vauche star on the base plate to remind you who designed this movement. Very comfortable on the wrist and very light, all in titanium and sapphire. Ulysse Nardin does a remarkable amount of stuff in-house, not just a movement manufacturer. In 2006, they bought their silicon partner, Sigatec, and gained the ability to make silicon components in-house. They are the smallest company in Switzerland that can do so. And in 2012, they bought Donze Catrin, which was their dial factory. Donze Catrin was a specialist and is a specialist in enamel. Um, it's not the only dial supplier to Ulysse Norden, but when you see a dial on a UN that is Grand Faux Enamel, you know it came from Donze. This watch was launched in 2017, the Marine Tourbillon, with Grand Faux dial, 100 meter water resistance, 43 millimeter stainless steel case, and you can see right down to the use of the numbering plate, reminiscent of Ulysse Norden's famous deck clocks or navigation chronometers from the 19th and early 20th century. For a watch that is a tourbillon, it's quite well loomed and remarkably water resistant, being 100 meters. Throw it on a Ulysse Norden rubber or textile strap and you can actually swim with it. Now it's fairly thin in profile, being just over 12 millimeters. The dial is extraordinary with a power reserve indicator up at the top. And then down at the base, we have a flying tourbillon. So there's no upper bridge to block your view. That's what it means to be a flying tourbillon. You could see both the escapement and the hairspring made of Ulysse Norden's proprietary silicon material and that means it's both unlubricated at the escapement level and anti-magnetic at both the escapement and the hairspring level making this watch virtually immune to magnetism the tourbillon carriage is beautifully hand finished you can really see that well from this angle you'll also appreciate that the screws and a little nod to the treatment of the hands have been blackened 
and then it is a free sprung balance for better resistance to shock and then finer adjustment. You can see that there is a Ulysse Norden proprietary recessed bolt aerodynamic balance to help improve chronometry. Oh, by the way, it has power reserve indicator up at the top. You can wind the watch manually and watch it travel. I always find it fun to watch power reserve operate. But this UN Caliber 128 is automatic winding. You can see a multiply finished and lacquered white gold rotor. Cote de Genève in circular fashion on the bridges. We have blued screws here on the reverse side. There's media blasting at the center of the bearing. All of the wheels as well as the bearing outer races are satinated. And you can see the barrel has been solarized too, so it's a good looking movement. Again, 60 hours of power reserve. Because of the design of the lugs, which are integrated into the case, you might think the watch wears large. And while it wears broad, it doesn't wear excessively so, nor does it wear thick, as you can easily slide it under a cuff. I would comfortably wear this watch and recommend it for a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference. By the way, this watch represents fantastic value in tourbillon design and tourbillon technology between the silicon, the flying tourbillon, the automatic winding, the Grand Faux enamel dial. It's hard to believe that this watch originally retailed for under $30,000 and pre-owned it retails for much less. La Suta Original makes beautiful things. Unfortunately, Swatch Group does not do a good job of promoting brands that are not Tissot, Longines, Swatch, and Omega. So, this German brand often languishes unacknowledged by watch collectors who would otherwise love to know that Glasuta Original makes its own tools, trains its own tool makers, trains its own watchmakers, makes its own dials, and builds its own movements. And this is a recent release from the last two years that's 40 millimeters in diameter with an oh-so 2020 to 2023 green dial. And you can see it's a gradient dial. At the Forsheim manufacturer where Glasuta makes its dials, they start with stamping and cutting, then they add galvanized features to enhance the base color, and then they use a lacquering process to create this fade that goes from light at the center to dark at the edge. We do have luminescent hands, but in a limited sense. The watch features the panorama datum, or the signature oversized date. You can see it is a double disc date, and the discs are flush, which is always an impressive achievement for companies using this kind of date indicator. We also have a stop seconds function, and we have a quick adjustment system built into the clasp. So if I push the trigger down, I have the ability to adjust it in and out. And you can see there's a rack type lock system that gives me increments of one millimeter. On the back, the movement is gorgeous. Now this is the caliber 9002, and it has a duplex swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism on a balance bridge that has been entirely freehand engraved. Adjusted in five positions, automatic winding with a three quarter style rotor. It has a 42 hour power reserve, and we do have fired blue screws. My favorite feature is this beautifully hand finished solarized reduction wheel that's made manually and is part of the winding system. We have high grade beveling, we have engraving on the bridge. You can see that we have some polished screws on the swan's neck mechanism, but also we have blued screws. So we have both polished and blued screws here. A watch that wears quite nicely at 40 millimeters. It's smaller than previous versions of the watch. And you can see it really fits quite well on my wrist. And I can recommend it even on a bracelet for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. Geo is one of the true high horology houses in Swatch. I do compare them to the likes of Breguet and Blancpain more than I compare them to, say, Omega and Longines. These guys know how to make a high-end watch, decorate it beautifully, and cloak it in subtle, sophisticated, but still emotionally resonant packaging. A very cool company that is hugely underrated. Then again, just about every Swatch Group brand that's not, again, Tissot, Longines, or Omega is underrated. And perhaps none more so than Breguet. With Breguet, you have a very fascinating marine line that came out in 2018, and if I'm perfectly honest, probably never really got its due for the quality being offered. A lot of folks loved the previous marine line, and so there were some objections regarding whether the current marine from 2018 forward would ever have the same kind of visceral emotional appeal as that original. Well, I'm here to tell you that yes, it does. And speaking of resonance, I'm going to show you one of the best features 
of the current Breguet 5547 Alarm Musicale. Let's hope I got that adjusted right. Resonant indeed. There's an on-off trigger. You can see there's a little bell in the aperture 12. That's your on-off trigger. You have a power reserve indicator for the alarm, and unlike most alarm watches, just wearing it on your wrist, it can wind the alarm itself, as well as the time-telling functions. There's a second time zone in 24-hour format over at three o'clock. The watch does feature a number of subsidiary setting modes, including hacking seconds, and then you can move the local time independently. The dial, although galvanized blue, is made of solid gold. So it's a disc of gold with gold hands and gold numerals. And then the rose lathe cuts this nautical wave undulation pattern into it. Turning out the light, you can see there is plenty of luminescence on this dial, up to and including the system for setting the alarm. You've got a lot of functions and a lot of features packed into a thin and fine, swimmable 40 millimeter case. Now it's 50 meters water resistant but with screw down crowns. That is surface swimmable. It is also very thin. You can see the typical breguet coining and then a strap in rubber held on using screws and bars, which is a nice secure way of attaching a strap to a case. We have a nautical wheel that is reminiscent of the wheel of a ship breguet, reminding you that the original Breguet company was the watchmaker to the French Navy in the era of Breguet and his sons. We have a double folding clasp. We have twin trigger release, so you do have to press both triggers for it to open up. It won't fly open inadvertently. It's quite secure. And the movement, though derived from a Frédéric Piguet caliber designed for Blancpain, is finished to Breguet standards. You could see that the striker features satination on its top and then mirrored beveling on the edge of each of its lobes. We have stripes across the bridges. We have engine turning beautifully tight and symmetrical across the base plate, a free sprung balance and a balance wheel that features a recessed set of bolts for aerodynamic optimization and then a silicon anti-magnetic hairspring. Wheels feature satination or in the case of the ratchet wheel above the barrel you can see solarization on the ratchet wheel and solarization also on the barrel beneath it and yes the beveling on the bridges is quite nice as is the polishing of the screw heads. Now we'll throw it on my wrist. I've shown you the watch up really close. Let's move away a bit and get a sense of it in perspective. This is one of the best high horology sports watches you can buy right now. A gold dial with guilloche, a solid gold case, a GMT, an alarm, the ultimate travel timer, swimmable and well loomed. This is a watch that can do it all. And I'd recommend it for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. Laurent Ferrier should have a two to three year waiting list. It's my estimation that the company out of Geneva, which hit like a supernova back in 2010, 11, and 12, lost momentum mainly because people turned against the notion of a high-end établisseur. And établisseur is a very traditional Swiss watchmaking house that creates the specifications for its parts, goes out to suppliers, obtains the parts, and then finishes, regulates, and assembles them. Laurent Ferrier does not make cases, dials, and movements. It works with the best in the industry to obtain those pieces. Now, the model you see here is the Galley Square with autumn satin dial. You can see it's got a lovely stainless steel-like brushed pattern, white gold assegai or spear-style hands, and dart style indices. We have a case in the traditional galley smoothed pebble form as though it were a pebble smoothed out in a stream over eons, but this is the galley square. And you can see that it's 41 millimeters. Impressively, note the lack of hallmarks. This is stainless steel, so you're not paying for precious metal. On the reverse side, the movement is gorgeous. FBN 229, FBN, Ferrier is the obvious one, but Barbacini and Navas are the B and the N. They were once upon a time the founders of B&B &B Concept. They left B&B &B to create La Fabrique du Temps, which was bought up by LVMH to become manufacturer Louis Vuitton. And that's where the high horology watches are made for LV today. That's the same place where these basic movement parts were engineered and are cut. 
At Laurent Ferrier, they have a finishing team that decorates the movements and also watchmakers who assemble and regulate them. The technology that was available through Fabrique du Temps was far beyond what Laurent Ferrier could have created using its own resources. So, for example, we have a micro rotor on a jeweled staff that operates silently and energizes a 72-hour power reserve, but the tech is really at the balance where we have two nickel phosphorus escape wheels. There is no Swiss lever escapement here. The wheels, and you can see one of them below my finger, directly impulse the balance two wheels, one for each direction of the balance's travel, so it only impulses the roller jewel in the direction of travel, so the wheel, the escape wheel, will always be turning with the balance wheel at the point of impulse. This reduces friction and improves accuracy. We also have a silicon blocker, so when one wheel is impulsing, the other wheel is locked. It's exactly like the Breguet Natural Escapement System of 1802, only this one actually works. Now, it's free sprung and adjusted in six positions, which is a super high-end standard, but you can also see that we have a half bridge for the balance that's made of steel, entirely black polished. There are four super sharp interior angles in there. You'll find more, one, two, three, four, on the bridges themselves. Interior angles are angles, I wish I could get a little bit closer, but this is the best I can do, where mirrored bevels meet and there's a sharp crease between them. And then we have a black polished bridge for the rotor, which has been cut with a sunray pattern, engine turning on the base plate, lovely luminescent stripes across the bridges. Note how all of the jewel sinks have been deeply mirror polished for a partridge eye effect. Laurent Ferrier finishes some of the best in the industry, which is why I counted among the elite of the independent watch scene. Even against brands that are making their own movements, cases, and dials, Laurent Ferrier's quality deserves to be compared to the likes of Marco Long or Long Untaina or Romain Gautier. Yes, it's that good. Carrie Voudelainen, yes, those comparisons are warranted. That's how good these watches are. Technically speaking, among the finest as well. Partnering with a big house like LV gives you the ability to do things technologically as with the double direct impulse that a smaller watchmaker could not achieve. Speaking of smaller watchmakers, Laurent Ferrier is one and Debitune is another. Now, Debitune does make its own dials, cases, and movements. The main reasons for that are, yes, to control quality, but also to be able to do super small runs. As a lot of suppliers don't like to hear that you want four dials or six dials or ten cases. So, Debitune has taken these faculties of production and insourced them. This is the DB25 Starry Various, 42 millimeters in grade five titanium. It debuted in 2018 and immediately became a signature piece for the brand. Debitun making about 200 to 250 watches a year keeps the model scarce. And the 25 is often the bridge from more conventional brand like Ferrier or Moser or Journe into the world of Debitun where things can get quite outrageous design wise. But on the DB25, you get a solid dial, a round case and fixed lugs. It doesn't feel sci-fi. That said, there are still distinctive treats that are specific to the brand, including discrete branding. Grade 5 titanium, fired blue and black polished, which is what we have for the dial. So this is a disc of titanium that's polished to a mirror shine and then fired to create this blue tone. We have gold leaf to create the distant celestial bodies, and then the large cabochon, or the near stars, those are actually three-dimensional pieces of gold that are inserted into the dial. We have rich rose gold cabochon outboard that act as our hour indices, and then we have blue on silver print for a nice warm contrast, rose gold modified breguet style hands, and then on the back you can see it's the exact same movement as the DB28. I was trying to explain to people that the DB25 is not the entry level watch at Debitune. That's the DB27 Titan Hawk. This is actually in the middle of the lineup, and in terms of the movement, it's exactly the same underlying movement as the 28. So a flagship piece. Now this is manual wind, six days of power reserve, twin barrel self-adjusting, that's a patented system, you cannot accidentally overwind it. We have a deltoid style barrel bridge, on top of which we have an elaborate spring system that braces the edges of the balance bridge, so one, two, it's called triple parachute, and it has two functions. One is to prevent the balance staff pivot from fracturing, the other is to more rapidly relocate the balance staff 
into its cup jewel so that the watch can recover from a shock more quickly and resume good timekeeping. Note that the balance bridge is fully rounded and black polished all the way around. This is the kind of treatment you normally expect of a balance bridge structure on a high-end Grubel 4C. And you can see the stripes are gorgeous and that they're mirrored, that the dark edge of each stripe faces in on both sides. And in order to do that, the reversing wheel that lays down the stripes is actually bi-directional. A wheel is used to create stripes, and then it's reversed to create mirrored stripes on the other side. And the finishing is traditional. If you look carefully, you can see both the barrel bridge and the cap atop the barrel bridge feature a rounded and broad mirrored bevel. There's solarization on the barrels themselves. The jewel sinks are polished. And then you can see that the springs outboard on each side of the balance have been fired blue. And so is the balance, which is Debatoon's own. Titanium wheel, white gold masses, a reduction of the impact of temperature changes on timing, but also a reduction of the effects of aerodynamic drag on timing. Debatoon uses a silicon escape wheel of its own design to reduce friction. And then there's a hairspring. They don't make the hairspring alloy, but they cut it shape the two pieces independently and then you just see there's a little clamp where they reattach the two pieces so it's flat like a flat hairspring shock resistant like a flat hairspring but breathes concentrically like an overcoil stripes black polish beveling solarization you've got it all and then you've got a rose gold nameplate for the watch at debatoon the buckles match the watches so you get a very extravagant prismatic almost buttress like lug and then a matching buckle on the DB27s and 28s. But you get a streamlined and smooth conventional buckle for the 25s. A lot of folks ask, why is it called Starry Varius? And the reason is simple. Denis Flageolet, who is the watchmaking lead and co-founder of the brand, reasoned that a Stradivarius violin is a high-end precision instrument, and so is a Debatoon watch. Now, this is probably the coolest watch they make right now. This is the one that I want most. For years, I told Debatoon, you guys need to go back to the 40 millimeter DB25 case. And they said, yeah, 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 we'll do that. I, I thought it would never happen. I thought we would be getting something relatively simple, like a 40 millimeter Starry Varius. Instead, they created their first ever 40 millimeter DB25 perpetual calendar. And so this is 40 millimeters in titanium. It's almost weightless. The dial is at least two primary parts. So you can see there's a toroidal matte blue metallic track for the minutes and hours outboard with silver on blueprint. And then there's a lovely rosette guilloche center in silver white. And the company does its own guilloche. It does its own engraving, microsculpture, gem setting. So not just the case, the movement, and the dial being made in-house. All of the craft arts have been brought in-house. Look carefully, and you can see that the signature spherical moon phase, it's, it's a complete sphere. It is two hemispheres, one of palladium, one of steel. They're attached together, fired over an oil-powered lamp. Think like Aladdin, that kind of lamp over a bed of metal shavings. The steel oxidizes blue, the palladium stays white. This has an adjustment interval of one correction every 122 years. The leaf hands are rolled on a miniature rolling pin to create this loft and arc so they don't contact the subdials or the globe. You'll also appreciate that we have a date, a day, and a month with a leap year indicator and a moon phase. And this being a perpetual calendar, no need to make any corrections to the calendar until the year 2100. On the reverse side, you can see it's clearly related to the movement in the DB25, but the biggest change is the automatic winding system. Five days of power reserve, and in order to maximize the winding efficiency, Denny uses a platinum mass at the end of a really long lever arm. The problem is, You've got rotational motion, which is great for winding, but then you've also got this translational motion where the rotor can actually tilt from side to side if it's shocked. So to prevent that from happening and damaging the bearing, back in 2006, Denis patented this quadruple spring system, which uses synthetic ruby set cantilever springs to keep the rotor center planted and stationary so it can rotate but it can't torque and twist and that protects the bearing system. You can see we still have the triple parachute but a different finish as the bridges now have a combination of media blast and satination. I love perpetual calendars, I love Debatoon, and I love the DB25s. And for me, this is the watch that I would want to own out of the current catalog. If Debatoon is my favorite brand, this has got to be my favorite watch. It's not a cheap date, but you know you're paying for quality. The investment they've made in Guilloche 
in cases, in dials, in movements, in original patented technologies. That's what you're paying for. You're not buying Ferraris and castles for Denis Flageolet. He lives in a converted inn in La Berson, so he's quite happy, quite content. His ambition is to make great watches, and that, above all, is what I really appreciate about Debitun. Every watch they make is a grail watch. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.